a second to make sure that the video is rolling on Metro Nashville Network. We're here today at the Metro Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for July 6th, 2023. For the cases that are heard this afternoon, we'll be reviewing maps, photos, and site plans. I'm Elizabeth Waits. I work for the Metro Codes Department, and I'll be presenting those site plans and maps to the board. And then we'll also hear from applicants, and if anyone's here in opposition to any of those cases, then we'll hear from you all as well. Um, we've got a couple of pre preliminary matters that we would like to announce. We have two cases that we are offering for the board to approve on consent today. However, if you are here wishing to speak against approval of one of these cases, please just let me know. I'll ask for a show of hands. You let me know and we can go ahead and hear any of these items if in fact um, neighbors are here asking for not approval of one of those cases, all right? So the cases that we are asking for approval of today are 2023-68. This is a request for a variance to reduce the side setback from 10 feet to three feet at 1340 Plum Street zoned RS 3.75. So is anyone here in opposition to that case? I don't see anyone. Case 2023-70 is a request to reduce the street setback to permit an 11 foot encroachment into the street setback on the front of the house to construct a front porch at 402 Ritchie Drive in the RS 20 zoning district. Was anyone here wishing to speak against that request? Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't see anyone in opposition to those cases, so at this time we would ask the board to consider a motion to approve these two items. Okay, motion to approve putting those two on the consent. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye, raise your hand. Aye. Okay, that passes, so those two go on the consent. Okay, thank you. So for those two items, they're not going to be heard today. Anyone who was here um, in support of those cases, you're welcome to go. And then our office will send you a copy of the order and follow up with you so that you can go ahead and get your permit finalized. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. So that leaves only one item on our case today. All right. This is case, uh, case 2023-70. Twenty, this is a request for a special exception from the 100-foot boundary setback at 6201 Hickory Valley Road in the RS40 zoning district. So I just want to make sure that everyone's here um, on this case today. And is anyone here wishing to speak against this request by... Forgive me, did you say 2023 Yes, it's a, there's also an address for this property along Davidson Road, so it's the same property. Okay, um, I'm wondering if that might be the same case that, oh, seven five. I think maybe I just wrote the case number down wrong. It is seven five. Sorry about that. Thank you. So twenty twenty three dash dash seventy five is the case that we'll be hearing today. Is there anyone here wishing to speak against approval of that case? You would like to be heard. Okay, and but you're not speaking in support of the application. Is that correct? Okay, well, we just want to be sure because we're going to allocate a, and then total allotted amount of time to each side of the parties to be heard. So the parties supporting this application will receive 10 minutes to make their presentation, and then you may speak with whatever concerns that you have regarding this application um, for up to 10 minutes, and then they will have an opportunity to use some of their time for rebuttal. So hopefully that process is clear to everyone. Every, both sides will have 10 minutes. And for the parties that are here to uh, speak in support of the application, you might want to reserve some of that 10 minutes to be able to rebut the, um, the other party's statements, okay? I want to make sure that we've gone through a couple of other uh, just quick items about our hearing today. Um, whenever you come up to speak, you're going to push a little button at the base of the microphone that looks kind of like a little person. The, the light will turn red. You can begin speaking and then please state your name and address whenever you get started. And then we'll, we'll run a timer and let you know um, how the time progresses. And then a quick notice that 
Um, once a vote is taken on an application, a party who disagrees with the outcome may request a rehearing within 60 days. Parties may also appeal the decision to the Davidson County Chancery Court by filing a writ of certiorari within 60 days. All parties are encouraged to seek independent legal counsel before filing an appeal to ensure that all deadlines and procedures are followed. So at this time, we will begin our hearing for the property at 6201 Hickory Valley Road. This is, a, um, this is the zoning map of this area. It's zoned RS40, and you can see that um, there's some residential portions nearby, and there's also a school um, adjacent to the property as well. This is the aerial view of the site. And then this is um, sort of a, another view where I just sort of wanted to show the golf course area and um, this way, if anyone wants to look sort of at what the, pro the property looks like now with the improvements or the surrounding area. And then we got a few photos of the existing site. This is the front entrance. And some of the landscaping as you approach the front building. And view of the golf course. These are the tennis courts. This is the tennis court building. My understanding is that this building would is going to be um, one of the buildings that's subject to the proposed uh, renovations or construction. Then this is a view of the rear of the main building and a restaurant area that's going to be receiving some improvements, although I don't think any of those specific or improvements are part of the special exception. This is the pool area of the property and then a bigger view of the golf course. And then this building is the golf cart uh, building that's gonna also be subject to the special exception request. And then here we have the site plan that has been filed. So at this time, um, anyone who's wishing to speak in favor of the case, just keep in mind that you have an aggregate of 10 minutes. So you might want to decide amongst yourself how you would like to allocate your time, or you may all come up at once and um, speak to the board at any time that the board um, is asking questions to you, then that time would not actually be um, deducted from the 10 minutes that you have. And so you might want to reserve some of your time for rebuttal. Um, at this time, please feel free to come forward and we would like to hear from you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Waits. Uh, I am the owner of Studio Topography, a landscape architecture Can firm. you state your address for the record? 4340 Little Marabone Road in Jolton, Tennessee. All right, thanks, sir. Uh, I have been working with uh, Hillwood Country Club uh, on the improvements for uh, the site you see uh, in front of you. Uh, we're looking at doing a lot of improvements to the Hillwood Country Club in a manner that I guess not a good way of putting it is probably deferred maintenance and then expansion upon their existing infrastructure that they have. Uh, the core areas that we're looking for, uh, I think it was mentioned earlier that not all of these are looking for the exception, but just for transparency, we want to make sure we're showing everything that is possibly happening at the uh, at the country club. Uh, golf course improvements. So this is a large improvement of the course itself in a rehab fashion. So not changing, adding holes, but actually rehabbing the grass, the turf, the surfaces that are there. Uh, we are doing some perim perimeter improvements. Currently the perimeter is uh, has a lot of cyclone fencing with invasive materials growing in those. So we'd like to replace those with uh, fencing materials that are actually equal to what's are in the surrounding community. So upgrading some of those fencing materials, removing the invasives, and then replanting those spaces. Uh, we're, what we're calling the North Campus is the tennis court area that you see uh, on the northwest side of the plan. That is replacing tennis courts in place. Uh, one of the big issues with the current tennis courts is they have, uh, they're not up to USTA regulations. They're a little bit smaller, so changing those footprints to match that. Uh, upgrading the cart storage facility that is to the uh, uh, east side of that facility and then reworking the tennis center, which is outdated and uh, needs upgrading as well. So that is the 100 foot exception that you see uh, within the package. 
Part of that will be upgrading a lighting. So we'll actually use directional lighting with LEDs to kind of create, you know, diminish the light trans uh, pollution that goes outside of the site. So upgrading uh, a lot of those elements as well. And then one of the items also mentioned was the clubhouse addition. Uh, the restaurant slide that was seen earlier in the presentation, that is actually a re renovation of that canteen area. There's a small addition to that, probably five to eight feet uh, on a couple of the roof lines, but the, that will remain in the current structure. That will renovate that canteen area that serves the pool and uh, golf. And then, we are asking for an exception out of the 100, per 100 foot to put a gatehouse at the front. This is a small 10 by 20 uh, building with gate arms and gates at the front entrance of the club. And then uh, a little bit of improvement to the driving range, which you see on the middle of the page to the west side of the page as well. So addition of space in that area and construction of a small golf studio. So a hitting bay that has a door that opens up to that that structure. Uh, we are looking at applying architecture that complements the community surrounding it and uh, and doing you know lighting and improvements that will benefit you know those closest to us. And then I will turn it over for any questions. The docket lists uh, several things. I just wanted to clarify. So there's a special exception. Um, there are variances from lot area setback, which is you mentioned the 100 feet and some encroachments in the 100 feet. Then there's landscape buffer yard and street access requirements. Are those still, those last two, are those still variance requests? Uh, that is correct. That is correct. The buffer yards are the north side of the tennis courts. Currently, there is a heavy buffer screen there. We plan to maintain that. The goal of the project is to not touch that. Uh, we've met with the residents over in that area, and we've actually looked at additional planting in those spaces to kind of enhance that buffer yard to remain that s separation. But that's not a variance request, right? You want to actually enhance it, not propose a change to it, correct? That's correct. Okay. And then the second one um, was street access requirements. What was, is there a variance request there? Uh, I've got here that uh, Hillwood, uh, Hickory Valley is actually considered a collector street. So uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I apologize. Jeff, Jeff Hooper was the one who put this together and, and uh, I, I know, I know, uh, that was needed, but I'm not sure exactly why. So I apologize for that. Yeah, my understanding from the zoning administrator is that, that those things weren't actually going to require special exceptions. I, I acknowledge that they are still on the agenda and they're on the cover sheet. But if you look at the planning department's analysis about in the middle of the last page, um, in the first paragraph there, um, there's a sentence that reads, the proposed changes to the use will continue to meet the required buffering and street access conditions. So I'm not exactly sure what the genesis of um, that being listed on the application was, but per planning and the zoning administrator, no, those are not modifications that require approval by the board. Okay, so we're only looking at the special exception and the variance from the lot area setback today. My understanding is that the lot area also is not before the board. So my understanding is that the only thing is that's before the board is specifically two um, structures that are asking to encroach into the 100 foot side setback boundary that goes along the entire property line um, that pertains to the building that um, supports the tennis area and the, the building that's used to um, like maintain the golf courts golf carts, which are kind of like on the same side of the property. And I think I might have a, another slide that um, is zoomed in a little bit. Let me check on that. I, I can I can explain those from, from this point. The, the tennis courts, the two buildings on equal sides of that, you can see the, the slight encroachment over those those edges. 
Uh, thank you for the updated slide. And that is, um, so it was just written as a lot area setback. We're just going to call it a hundred foot setback. That uh, thank you. Thank you. For us today. Does that sound good? But, uh, good thank you. Uh, that sounds correct. Uh, and and uh, just the, the 50 acres, uh, Hillwood Country Club is actually two parcels. So I think one's under 50. So that may be why that was brought up. Uh, totally, they're uh, 146.9. Right. Okay. And um, so that tennis center is the existing building is encroaching over the 100 feet? It is actually in a different location uh, in the middle of the court. So in order to gain that spacing, we had to uh, relocate the building. It also helped with accessibility, uh, relocating the building, not having it in the middle of the, the, the court area. We were able to get parking uh, accessibility and then transitions down to the courts. And tell us again, what is the encroachment into the 100 foot setback? It is about 15 feet into that, that setback. It's within the existing footprint of the current courts. So we did not go beyond that location. So the current courts encroach within the setback? That, that is correct. Okay. Yes, but the, but the courts themselves are not subject to that 100 right, foot boundary? Right, right, right. Any further questions for the applicant? Okay, uh, you'll have some time on rebuttal if you would like it. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll hear from the opposition. Yeah. And if you'll make sure that red light is on the, whichever microphone you're going to speak at. There it is, yeah. And if you'll give us your name and address, sure. please, sir. My name is Craig Lesser, and I live at 117 Dunham Springs Lane, 37205. Our home is part of uh, about six or seven homes that are uh, backing up to the tennis courts. And I hope you all will forgive me because all of this stuff is way over my head. Um, but we have some, I have some basic concerns that while I think the folks at the, um, at the country club have done a good job in opening up to the community having hearings but most of this stuff i just don't understand and i just want to be on the record expressing my concern about two or three things that probably won't hold up the variance at all but i just want to make sure i say it uh, one is we are concerned about a definitive confirmation about things like runoff when changes are made to the tennis courts we would anticipate that it will change the topography to the point where water will be an issue. And we want to make sure that that isn't an issue, that it is taken care of in an appropriate time. Hearing, yes, we're going to take care of it, is kind of not enough confirmation for, for me as a homeowner. The second thing is, I just heard in recent days that they're going to make paddleball courts. Maybe that's not part of this discussion here today. Or, I'm sorry, pickleball courts. Well, pickleball is a whole different thing than tennis courts. It's noisy. It's extremely noisy. And we're concerned about making sure there's an appropriate... Look, if they want to build pickleball courts, that's cool. That's their issue. But that there's enough of a buffer and a sound barrier to make sure that it doesn't... You know, we hear the tennis balls, and that's just part of living in the community. But pickleball noise raises it to a level that's a little bit more intense than anything that we really have been anticipating. Um, I, again, I can only compliment the country club and their folks. Uh, they've had a couple of meetings for the community, um, but it's really hard to get a definitive answer on some of these things. And if we could get a definitive answer, we'd be thrilled. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Have you asked them directly whether they intend to convert any of these existing tennis courts into pickleball courts? We understand from one of the board members who lives in the community that that is the case. And then looking at that, you're, you are, Dunham Springs is not marked there, but you're one of the homes that um, adjoin the tennis courts there that are in green. Uh, yes, and forgive me, I'm colorblind, but... I okay. presume that's correct. Okay. All thank right. you. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much.
And then there are four minutes remaining for your rebuttal period. Uh, we really appreciate those comments. Uh, uh, what you heard from, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the, the name, but those are correct assumptions. Those are, those are, there will be pickleball courts. Uh, currently, we have four pickleball courts planned. If you look at the plan in front of you, the L-shaped building, so the court uh, the just back, to the left of that. The backdrop building. Uh, no, uh, it, it says golf cart storage. Okay. Uh, the golf cart storage label, uh, the top right-hand corner of that, those are the four pickleball court locations. So, uh, can you, can, I'm, I'm, I'm not following you. Tell, which ones are they? Uh, are you talking about the building that... No, no. Uh, if you look at the t eight tennis courts, the eight, eight tennis courts that we have, there's a... A uh, label that says golf cart storage. Right. With a label, the word cart, that is the, the four pickleball courts will go where that tennis court is. So it'll serve as a tennis court, and then it'll be lined to have four pickleball courts at that so location you're as well. So you'll convert one tennis tennis court into four pickleball courts. That is correct. Is, is that clear? Okay. I just want to make sure that, that we're talking about the, the same location for everybody. Those will be uh, pickleball courts if if uh, the club has enough uh, of, you know, you know, Members who want to use pickle, it's an option that they want to want to give. Uh, pickle is becoming something that's popular, uh, and so that is an option. Those are the only locations right now that pickle is looking at being put. So, so four courts, uh, four for one of those courts, uh, and the drainage. So, we will be with this rendition. We are held to Metro's updated stormwater uh, uh, standards, which are. Uh, extremely more difficult to re reach than current still than the standards when these were built. So we will on Hillwood's property do uh, re revised stormwater installation with bioretention and detention on there. So actually the Hillwood tennis courts will be retaining more than we did previously. And then what the water quality will come with that. We do understand that there is water coming through the neighborhood that goes onto Hillwood's property at that. Unfortunately, we can't do anything more for the, the, the you know, other than receive the water that comes through. The, we, we don't have the possibility of detaining that. We've talked a lot about that. But from the standpoint of what Hillwood is releasing, that will actually be better situation than it was previously. Any questions, Robert? You have a question. Um, I guess my question more is uh, for Elizabeth. Maybe she can help me understand. And just to clarify real quick, though, the last comment about the stormwater, you're doing a full grading plan, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, yeah, that should certainly resolve any uh, runoff. Uh, Elizabeth, what capacity does zoning have about the restrictions on tennis courts? I mean, could they theoretically create a tennis court and turn it into a volleyball court? And and that's actually the court? question, yeah, that I had too, based on that, you know, the conversion being in that boundary. So I'm looking into that. If you don't mind giving me a minute, I'll yeah, get back sure. with you. That was really good. Okay. In your plans, do you have any noise mitigation? I mean, it, those are kind of close to a couple of those houses in the back, and I'm not a big pickleball guy, so don't, I'm speaking in, in a certain degree of ignorance now. Currently, no. Currently, we have the screen buffer and, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, the planting material around it, uh, you know, it's it's such a new sport and such a new new thing that the investment is just to supply those for uh, members who possibly want to play that. So I, I think that that's kind of probably more uh, the situation Hillwood is in is they've gotten a few requests uh, that people want to play a little bit more pickleball. And so we're providing, we're actually leaving those as tennis courts that will convert to pickleball when they want to play it. Tennis is the main driver. Uh, but pickleball is becoming more more popular, so so they wanted to provide that if if that option's available. Well, and I expect it will because it's hugely popular. The cover story of the New York Times on Sunday was the pickleball courts and the annoyance there. And I I understand it. I don't know that mm -hmm. it relates to your application, but I mean it's 
where they're springing up, neighbors are having real issues with them. Um, so I think that's why Mr. Lawless was asking about the, the noise mitigation, because that looks, if, if I lived in one of those homes, I would not want a pickleball court that close with that constant whacking going back and forth. Yeah. I'll say I really don't have an idea without um, photographs or maybe it's really hard to see what's existing in this location just on the information we're given. My colleagues showed me um, an aerial view, but I'd rather see an aerial view from in this packet that we could see what is there existing and because I'm having a lot of trouble seeing what these tennis courts are sitting on. And there's a there might be an existing landscape buffer at the property line, but you also talked about a screen. And so I personally don't really understand it all yet. Uh, uh, I apologize. I, I, I don't have a, a existing, but the existing tennis courts are sitting within five feet of their existing locations. Uh, we've held the edge of them where the property boundary is. We've actually reduced by one tennis court uh, in order to provide better accessibility through the courts. So the layout you currently see is the where you see three courts, there were four before that the line of three courts. So there was actually four courts there. We removed one of those to apply it. But the six courts along the property boundary are in the same location. And, uh, and it's along those you're going to remove the invasive species screening. And th that would be the rest of the property along or around uh, so the, Davidson the, Road. This that screen is an evergreen screen uh, that that will that will remain. Okay. I guess I don't know what that buffer is. Is it right at where the property line is between the tennis courts that are staying in their same place and the home? So what Correct. is there now? Correct. There are uh, evergreen trees uh, that are probably 15 to 20 foot, uh, maybe a little bit taller than that, a double row of those. So there's a dense evergreen screen that divides the property from, from uh, uh, the, the residents in that location. There's actually a residential entrance over there, too, between two of the houses where the residents in that area can actually uh, uh, walk to the, the country club and have access. Could the three courts that are um, planned north of the tennis center, could those be considered for pickleball instead of the other court? Mm -hmm. The uh, seven courts that you see are between the two yellow buildings are actually clay courts. Uh, so it's a different surface. So the two courts down lower are uh, our concrete courts and would be the, the preferred plot location for that. And all the courts are currently existing. Correct. Right. Correct. They're plus one. What, say the end plus uh, there's, uh, there's actually one additional court that we removed uh, to to uh, allow for better you're access. You're not adding any, yeah. and that's not part of your special exception request to add any tennis courts. And you don't need any kind of special exception or variance with request to the buffer that's already in, in place between the tennis courts. You just have the two buildings you're putting the, 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 that the is, property. That, that is correct. One, uh, one, the, the one on south on plan goes over uh, a small bit over that 100-foot setback. Okay. Yeah, I guess the confusion is that those are all shown in bold and green, and I thought they were new. Yeah, no, those are <laughs> existing courts. Yeah, that's what I thought initially, too. Yeah. So. The, uh, the, the club is very sensitive to the neighbors and, and their needs, so noise mitigation, if possible, uh, I think it is something that we, we could look at and talk with Hillwood with. This goes back to a point of clarification here uh, in regards to the tennis courts. And again, I'm looking at a, a Google map, so I'm not sure what date this was taken, but probably fairly recently. Um, it's showing those two additional courts that are essentially behind the golf court storage. It's not being there. It looks like it's under construction or something similar of that, at least in this particular screenshot. They, they are currently there, but, but they are. Um, for argument's sake, let's say you're doing nothing else other than doing these tennis courts. Would you need to be in front of us in order to do the construction on these tennis courts within the 100-foot setbacks, my understanding? Uh, currently, I do not think so. I think, I think it would be a renovation job at that point. But I would defer. So the, the use as a rec center in that area 
is subject to a special exception. And so the question becomes whether that really changes that use. If it changes the use to go from tennis court to pickleball, then it would still require approval by the zoning appeals board. And that would be a question for the zoning administrator to determine whether or not that's a sufficient enough change in, change in use to require um, your approval. And that's not before us today. That's not before us today. And But um, to the extent that... Um, <clears throat> So maybe we could learn a little bit more about those sound and buffer um, proposals that are being made in that part of the development. That's a really good point, Elizabeth. I'm having a hard time getting over the sound portion of yep. this, obviously. So, I mean, it sounds like to me, we could either request or deny the the building's going over the setback, but if they change the use, a neighbor can make an argument that they went from tennis to something else and then it would come back before us. Is that what I'm potentially understanding? Yes, if the zoning administrator determined that that changes that use, uh, you know, it, some like pickleball is not, you know, in the zoning code. So, is it right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know, I understand. Oh, yeah, well, I just mean, so that's, so that would be kind of the quit. That's the reason why he would have to make that, would ultimately, it, that would determination. It, would it but as far as defer this to, I don't right. know. Was the zoning administrator aware that it, there were big uh, conversion from tennis courts to pickleball, or did, maybe that's what happened because I, I, it's not before us, but I'm wondering if the zoning administrator knew about the change of use because. These appear as um, tennis courts, and I don't remember anything in the materials. Maybe I missed it that says anything about pickleball. No. Yes, the answer is yes. 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 He didn't. No. He yes. Didn't know. Well, we could always ask our legal counsel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like the deferral idea. And they may be able to talk to the neighbors back there. Well, I mean, I, I just mitigation. I don't, let's make yeah. sure. Let's make sure he, you've got a little time remaining. Does anybody have any other questions for the applicant? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing and discuss. Okay. All right, so let's just go. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't. I mean, the only reason I would say a deferral would be worth it is you know if we're looking at something now and maybe there's a question of whether some information is missing i would have you know rather have that full picture if the zoning administrator takes the position that it's not a change in use then that sort of answers that if it if it's something that has to be because the point you know if we could we could approve something and then all of a sudden if it has to come back before us i just want to make sure we're being consistent in, in how we're treating the site plans but the tennis courts i know it's part of the conversation obviously um and Ms. Wallace brought up the noise issue, but that's not necessarily before us today. It's really just the yeah. extension of the new structure, right. 15 feet over the right over the setback. Um, He's trying to avoid multiple trips. With all due respect, it's not that we don't love having you come. Yeah, and well, and I, I don't know if the, the zoning administrator knew there was an objection about the pickleball courts. I mean, that's that's it, it, it's really it's not before us in the sense that. We don't have to approve or disapprove it, whether it's pickleball or not. But if it's a change of use, then that would uh, give us authority to condition the special exception on certain things like more noise right. mitigation. And I mean, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm wanting to to obviously be reasonable with the country club, but also I understand fully the neighbors that they don't want this getting out in front of them so that. They wake up and all of a sudden there are four pickleball courts over there and they're they're this having noise well, and there's no mitigation. Well, and in that case though, I would I would be nervous. I I might caution against us holding up approval of the or disapproval of the variance for the building as a a proxy for getting information about the pickleball courts because if they're if yeah, I think you raised a good point on the that you know what they're asking for today is a variance for that building to encroach. It doesn't actually touch on the use and so if we give them a variance on that building we're not necessarily giving them a variance to to do more than what that does right so right and it's a special exception. yeah special yeah and it, and clarify i mean according to what i'm looking at it's really just one building i heard you mention two going over the 100 foot 
property line, but I know we we're close it out. But it is the uh, the second building is the backdrop building, but that is uh, an existing building. I do know we have a comfort station, a restroom facility that's on the other side of the golf course that may be part of this package that goes over that hundred foot and it had the reasoning for that location was uh, I think the safety of the golf course it needed to be in that location because of where the holes were located I just thought it was the members were getting older <laughs> the equipment's getting better I think people can hit further <laughs> oh, our, our, the public hearing still closed I didn't catch that I we, we right right up in it if you want to ask a question um, can we read your sure. thoughts yeah okay um, I think the other building was a gatehouse that's in the hundred foot setback. That is correct. That is the gatehouse pointed to the south uh, at the main entrance. Okay. So, the, uh, so just to be just for clarification, the backdrop uh, building, that building is currently there in that footprint. Uh, there will be some minor improvements for that. Uh, the tennis center, which is slightly over, uh, which is the building to the south and the gatehouse to the right of that. And then there is a comfort station on the other side of the course that is slightly over as well. Just for reference, the well, comfort yeah, station. I'm sorry. sorry. We, we closed public hearing. Yeah. Wouldn't we like to? Well, I mean, wrap it all up in one, but I agree I, I, with you. I don't, you don't want to hold up the, some of the stuff. Well, I don't, and nothing here looks to me like there's a huge amount of urgency. I guess I'd like to hear from the zoning administrator a, a yes or no that there's a, that to changing from Tennis one sport Tennis. to another is a change of use or not. Um, I mean, to your point, yeah, I mean, the, what they're doing. <clears throat> In terms of the special exceptions, if it if there was no change of use at all, then you know I I would be fine with the with the I think they've met the requirements of the special exception. But I also think that if it changes the use, one of the things we consider in a special exception is the deleterious effect on neighbors. And I'm just this is a novel issue, and I don't know you know whether and I'm, I'm sure it's not in the code that. Their pickleball is probably not codified anywhere in the zoning code at this point. And I just, uh, if, I'd like to hear from the zoning administrator that it's either yay or nay, we consider it a change of use or not. And if it's not considered a change of use, then I think the special exception has to be, you know, in my mind, it's been met. Um, but if it is a change of use, then I think that gives us the, the authority to condition it on, you know, ensuring that there are noise mitigation that, that's sufficient for the neighbors. I understand. And that gives them a little time potentially to go back and work with the neighbors and come up with something and present while they're dealing with Joe. I mean, at the same time, they, you know, come from their point of view, they've been open and honest and get provided more information than we necessarily needed as well. And that's generally what we want developers to do to reach out. But I do understand the other side of conditioning it as well. If it's going to be, a, I mean, either way. Oh, I think they've been very open. I mean, they oh, they I, have told us flat out that they didn't try to be non-transparent about the pickleball. I just, um, it, I, and I, I will say that uh, that it's it's come to my. I don't play pickleball, but it it has come to my attention largely through the article that I read that it's become okay. a real. It's obvious to me that where it starts happening in neighborhoods that a lot of neighbors are having pretty serious issues with it. It's um, who never had issues with tennis courts. That's why I think if you go from a tennis court where nobody's complaining and you change the use to pickleball, but a lot of people are complaining, then I mean, the change of use seems to make a difference to me. So. It's, it's noisy for a variety of reasons. One, just the, the nature of the ball and the, and I guess the paddle is noisy, but then there's the volume when two people are playing tennis, there's usually two or four people on a court. When pickleball is happening, there's up to, you know, four times that amount of people on one court. So just the nature of balls being hit on one court has gone up and the volume has gone up as well. So I think that's those are the two things, at least from my understanding of it. I'm not a pickleball acoustics expert, but, <laughs> you know, it's, and so. Um, Mr. Chair, may I have us open it? I've got one question I'd sure. just like to yeah. ask. Does anybody object to opening up or? Yeah, no. okay. Is... 
two weeks a disaster to your planning? Or does it really adversely impact where you are right now? Uh, it, it does hurt schedule a little bit just because you know, you know, the shutdown period. So we're, we're in that time frame where we're losing time. But, you know, I think our goal is, is to make sure, you know, you know, the city, the neighbors and the people involved uh, that this affects are are content with what we're doing. That's why we're trying to be transparent. So uh, we we want to do what we need to do to, to make sure that the things are taken care of. So being the typical lawyer that I am, I'm going to ask so it wouldn't cause you, I'm going to go to two questions instead of the one I promised. So what I'm hearing you say, it wouldn't be something that you would be totally distraught if this matter got passed and put at the front of our next docket, which would mean Joey's going to have to do a little work when he gets back tomorrow, I hope. So would it? Uh, if it provides clarity, uh, we will be back in two weeks. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, the, to, for a one meeting deferral uh, for this matter, case number uh, 2023-075 to be placed at the front of the docket. Since I started all this, I'm going to second his motion. Okay, so there's a motion and a second to defer this for two weeks uh, and place it at the front of the docket for the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, and there's a second. Any further discussion about that? Okay, all in favor say aye. Raise your hand aye. Okay, so that passes. So see you in two weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your material was very helpful. We appreciate it. Um, do we have any further business? No. no. no okay, motion. Uh, is there a second? <laughs> second. Okay, all in favor. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. See you all in. Excellent. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.